Anything? So I, I had a good happenstance this week. I like to start with positive things. Excellent. Do tell. Uh, I had been discussing last week the fact that I had challenges with Blackboard to uh, collaborate, Illuminate Blackboard Collaborate. We had been using their free um, public source um, new version 11, and there had been some conflicts with people who decided to schedule at the last minute, and we lost our recordings, and yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> and um, I explained that we were doing a MOOC with a lovely global audience, and I have now, we have now been given a private Blackboard Collaborate room through the rest of the year. And the group that we were going through, Learn Central, will no longer be affiliated with Blackboard Collaborate as of the end of the year. I guess they had a few challenges going on there. So they're looking for was, a new sponsor. Was that Steve yeah. Hargadon's group? Yes, that's Steve Hargadon's uh -huh. group. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was very helpful, but you know, it's, it's limited when you go between two tech services, the Learn Central and Blackboard <laughs> Collaborate. So at the last minute, you know, the decision was made just, you know, give us the room so we've got it for the rest of the year. So that's a good thing. So I'm sorry, you're getting it through Learn Central or you're getting it through Collaborate. Well, it's through Learn Central, but it is the Blackboard Collaborate version 11. Okay. Now, the university system or the college that I'm associated with with SUNY uses Illuminate version 10, and they didn't want to upgrade. And I just thought going into the version 11 would be a wise choice because it gives us a few more options, and it's a little easier for presenters who are not used to presenting to use. <clears throat> I'm surprised you guys were able to get it. I believe they rejected uh, Change 11, although I think that was Collaborate, not Learn Central. Yeah. Well, the problem was we were in Learn Central, and we were doing fine until it came time to broadcast. And then there seemed to be conflicts of people who scheduled after I had scheduled, and they were back-to-back, -back, which didn't give the um, requisite time in order to end one recording and start another one. And so we were yeah, being and, linked. And they and might have zeroed what was in the recording when they started. That's what I always do. There could uh -huh. be something there. So I'll zero it, I'll, I'll, I'll delete it, and then uh, start my own recording. Well, I'm not that they tech savvy. Just I'm just lucky to remember to start a recording and end a court recording. <laughs> so I'm trying to learn from you guys. And boy, I have learned so much just in the last month. Well, now if I can just if, organize it all in my head. If the two sessions were actually back to back and the second one was recorded, then your recording should be in the first session. It is. They were tied together and they didn't uh -huh. want to release them because of privacy concerns. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so, hmm. so I had to reschedule for the second week and then last week we went back to the college's version 10 and Jeff was kind enough to uh, do the live streaming and then upload it to YouTube for George Siemens' presentation. Getting so all sorts of sure hits, too. Pardon? Getting all sorts of traffic. He's very popular. Yeah. Speaking of popular, Stephen Downs, can you hear us? Well, he's <laughs> talking. <laughs> we can't hear him. We cannot hey, hear you. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We don't hear you, Stephen. Although you responded very promptly, so we're thinking you hear us. Mm -hmm. oh, one moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he's, he's working. Hiya again. He's doing it. Oh, good. He can hear us. We just can't hear him. <laughs> uh, um, that means we can, we can talk about him, and he can't say anything back. Yeah. And, and Lisa, this... Golden opportunity. Uh, I don't know if that's the address of the live stream video. I usually send people to edtechtalk.com slash live. And just as a nagging okay. reminder, I encourage people to chat there. And I'll go ahead and put right. that URL in. But you don't want that running at the same time that the Google Hangouts running, correct? On my computer. I have to um, turn one no. of them off. Co either turn it. pause it or mute it. Yeah, right. if you you don't want to turn it off because you want to text chat there. Well, Hang I don't even have it on. I just came into Hangout and I'm text chatting in 
in Hangout. I'm seeing it. Now, someone had mentioned that there's it's possible to turn off the dings in the Hangout, but I have yet to find that setting. I, I don't hear any dings in the Hangout. Hmm. I, I get dings actually, I've, sometimes. Uh, I've, I've noticed that in the last couple of Hangouts. Uh, there haven't been any dings and there have been text chats. Not sure why that is. So anyway, Carol, you are set for your live sessions in Collaborate. Um, yes. What else is what else is going on with uh, CMC? Well, tomorrow is going to be kind of interesting. It's what I call the third leg of the pedagogy stool of connectivism, uh, personal learning environments, and network knowledge. It's going to be a discussion of transliteracy and transmedia on uh, transliteracy and meta literacy on me social media. Wow, that's and a lot of prefixes. It, a lot of trans yeah. and meta. Well, let's let's just call it transliteracy on social media. Uh, and it's and it's sort of ties all of that together, the connectivism and the um, personal learning environment, because of the technologies and the applications that we're now selecting to design our own personal learning environments and connect, uh, Google Plus being one of them, you know, any number of different things. What would be the and difference course, between transliteracy and multiliteracies? You know, there's a lot going around about <laughs> meta literacy, trans literacy, multi literacy, uh, and and I'm not getting going to get into a word game on that. Um, it, it really has to do with individual definitions, wouldn't you say, Vance? Well, yeah. Actually, I was listening to the EdTech crew. Uh, I I was listening to it last night or the day before the, the podcast it was probably from earlier in the month, but they were talking to Joyce Valdez and mm -hmm. she was using the word transliteracy and she was talking about what seemed to me to be multiliteracies or what I've called multiliteracies. I mean like you say you can get into the semantic games I mean you know the concepts are so important but um, mm -hmm. I thought that would lead with that uh, the next time I teach the course which will be in January and um, well, that, that's I, I think just, one, uh, you know. Yeah I think one of the interesting aspects of it is the two people who are discussing it have written a book on Meta literacy and trans literacy, and one of them is in a librarian. And I think the educational institutions are trying to find a way to have libraries evolve with the technology in a better a better way than they have in the past. So yeah, that's, and Joyce that's my is take right at the. Is it? She, I mean, she's. Uh, you should actually. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's. It, it, I don't have the URL handy, but I sh maybe I can find it. I should Google it and find it because I need to find it. So I'll put it in one of the chats. But it was just a great uh, conversation with uh, with Joyce Fowler. Uh, the EdTech crew. Are, are you? Was it a pushback type of conversation? Pushback. What do you mean by yes, that? Yes, I am. You listen to Ed EdTech crew. Is that what you were you yesing to? No. Sorry, I missed all that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, anyway, the EdTech crew are Tony Branson, no, sorry, Daryl Branson and Tony Richards in uh, Australia. And they have been lately talking with some really interesting people. Uh, they had Dan Pink on the other day, for example. Uh, Past. I, we, we hear you. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Yay! Yay! You're now here. You're one of us. Wonderful. One of Fully us. functioning. One of us. For, I was, just for future Fully geek reference, Stephen, what was the issue? How did you solve it? Uh, it was Soundflower had been set as my default uh, because I was using it uh, to do nice casting. And when I went in to uh, change my microphone selection, uh, Google Hangout would crash. So I had to exit the browser completely, change my default to my uh, regular uh, built-in microphone, and then open the browser anew, and then come into Google Hangout, and then try to set it two or three times, and on the third time it worked. Okay. Mac issues. Not bad, and all in 15 minutes. I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> and also a point of... have focusing issues. 
A point of clarification, Vance, was it Joyce Valdez or Joyce Valenza? Valenza. No wonder. I used to have a prof- You're right, Valenza. I used to have a professor named Joyce Valdez, and that just name just <laughs> stuck in Yes. And in fact, that's why I can't Google it now. Yeah. Valenza, of course. Joyce Valenza. Thanks for the correction. I'll, I'll, I'll get it now. <laughs> okay. Sorry to interrupt you, Carol, if you had Thank you. a thought to finish. Now, you, Jeff, you mentioned the, the broadcast and so forth and so on, and, and we've done a few recordings that have been uploaded to YouTube. And sometime during the week, I posed a question to you about wouldn't it be great to have a library resource of many of these recordings from from the MOOCs, um, since they are Creative Commons, that they could be used as a repository for research and learning. And I just thought I'd toss that out there. Did anybody have any ideas on that? Well, I can hear Dave Cormier already saying, well, the internet is the archive. Yeah, yeah it's I not was... a very good archive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of a one location or several locations where one could go to um, access a catalog of, of what's there as well as the actual recordings. I'm not volunteering. I'm <laughs> That's the challenge. <laughs> yeah, I think there is a need for a preservation function. A lot of our recordings, for example, were uh, done in Illuminate. And then Illuminate uh, mm -hmm. basically became closed, and uh, this impacts our accessibility to our own recordings. So, and that's that's a fairly yeah. common phenomenon. Yeah, Illuminate using, recordings tend to disappear as well. Sorry, uh, go ahead, Lisa. I've been I've been using Publish to to export them. I just I always figure these big company things are going to go down, and if there's a way to record it or export it, I try to do it immediately and put it in another format that I can do something with somewhere. What is that yeah. tool, and where do you send it? It's Publish. We we have through our Illuminate now Collaborate thing the uh, Publish function, which lets you um, export the um, an MP3 audio stream and the video and all of that from Illuminate separately into commonly used formats so you can put it together yourself somewhere else. Is that immediately um, after the broadcast or before you start? Uh, that's the recording itself. You actually download the recording in the Collaborate format and then run it through the Publish function and it exports. It takes a while but it exports the different streams that are part of the session. Thank you, Lisa. I, I've been using that uh, because they had a, a one-month trial, and then I, of course, I like it so much I want to buy it. But I have not been able to buy it. I've written to uh, Blackboard Collaborate people. Uh, they put me onto a local supplier. The local supplier realized I wasn't a rich uh, educational institution and sort of flaked out on me. And I just there's no place to download it uh, to pay for it. Or do you, do you know if there is one? Or? No, I had to get it through the college, and then they gave mm -hmm. me a link, and then they gave me a code. And this was before the changeover to Collaborate. So I suspect that with the changeover to Collaborate, some of that stuff has probably gotten stuck. And mm -hmm. I don't, I'm don't. i hoping Publish is going to come out the other end when they're done screwing around. Mm -hmm. But um, I hope it hasn't disappeared. If it has, you need to look for, for important friends who have a copy. Yeah, it hasn't disappeared. You can you can still download the um, the the trial. It's just that when your trial expires, then you have to go to another computer and use a different email address. You know, a little bit of a yeah. hassle. Yeah. Correction: You have to look for friends who have a copy and the code. Ah, <laughs> like Lisa has a copy and a code. Okay, well, never mind. Mm. <laughs> it it is sad that there aren't more options in this space. Uh, Fuse Meeting, I was not aware of until the change eleven. And it looked promising, although things didn't seem to go so well this week. What <laughs> happened, Stephen? Um, we had a few issues. The um, I think the primary issue was the difficulty with the audio. When uh, like just like Big Blue Button, when you first log into Fuse, your audio is not on by default. So you log into Fuse, and then you have to click a microphone and select your audio settings and it gives you four choices 
typically uh, either uh, an 800 number call in, a local number call in, uh, Skype call in, or what they call VoIP, voice over internet protocol. And the uh, we didn't offer the phone ones because that would cost us money. Uh, a lot of people selected either Skype or VoIP and had significant problems with them. Uh, the the uh, audio requires a plug-in, and there were, uh, I guess, significant delays in the plug-in downloading and installing. So people were, you know, they're in trying to hear audio. They couldn't hear anything. They couldn't say anything. Also, our first meeting, we launched on what is called webinar mode, and that's a really bad name for it. It really should be called lockdown mode <laughs> because it, it means that people coming in can't even use the chat room to type comments. We will never, ever, ever use webinar mode again. Webinar mode means broadcast mode, and no participants can take part. So anyhow, that was the major problem. Our speaker, Allison Littlejohn, even though she uh, arrived early, was never able to get the uh, plugin downloaded, installed, and running. So she never mm. had audio, which is why we canceled it ultimately, because we couldn't even record a presentation. Then finally, uh, I was uh, logged in as the host, and I'm getting message after the message Message after message, I'm pointing to the top of my screen, which you can't see at all. Message after message at the top of my screen, there. That's really not oh, working. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, saying so-and-so uh, was yeah. not granted access, or so-and-so was denied access to the meeting. And I figure we had a peak attendance of about 45 but an attempted attendance of at least twice that. We were getting all kinds of bounces. Uh, the people who were being bounced weren't getting any messages or anything. They were just being bounced. And I was getting a little one second display. So and so was uh, denied entry and then it's gone. I'm still trying to get an answer from Fuse Meeting as to why it would be giving messages telling me people are not able to get into the meeting. Uh, that shouldn't have happened. So those two things combined uh, added up to a disaster. A learning opportunity. Experiments are never oh, failures. That's yeah, a learning opportunity. Yeah, there's no question about that. Um, I'm curious. Carol was saying that she got access to Learn Central. Have you knocked on that door? Uh, no, they're shutting down Learn Central. As of December 31st, but yeah. until then, they're still available. Well, but I don't think they're taking new clients either. But, but I mean, they're shutting it down, so right. you know, why make any well, investment they're shutting, time in that? They're shutting Learn Central down, but it's still going to stay over into Illuminate. Whatever recordings you have supposedly will be yeah. under Illuminate's banner. But that, that brings me to a question for tomorrow's broadcast. Again, I want to save it because the fellow who's doing it is the dean of um, the Center for Distance Learning at Empire State College, and they're sponsoring our MOOC. Yeah. So it would be nice <laughs> if I could be able to upload I his presentation to YouTube. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. So well, I'm looking I, for I suggestions as to what, what well, I can do. See. Jeff, you suggested something the other day uh, that you used to record these live stream things. Yeah, I'm using it now. It's Screencast-O-Matic, and especially yeah. if you're not speaking, it's super easy. All you do is say, okay, I want to record this part of my screen, and this, I want to set my audio to stereo mix, and you mm -hmm. get whatever sounds happening on the computer, you get that portion of the screen, the free version is limited to 15 minutes. The pay yeah. version, which is like $15 a year, is yeah, supposedly limited really to an hour, but I have no limit. I can, I've gone hours, no problem. <laughs> now, I want to ask you a, a technical question, Jeff, very briefly. My pleasure. Uh, because you're using stereo mix as your audio input. You're using probably a USB microphone. Uh, 
in any case to get the system to pick up your microphone, you have to uh, select listen as an option. When you do that, do you get an echo of what you're saying in your ears? I wouldn't call it an echo. I'd say I hear it. I hear you myself hear along it. with you, yes. Yeah, I, I find that really annoying. I'm so used to it, I kind of miss it if I don't hear it. I because oh, I've been, I mean, but the thing is, it's gotten a lot better because we've been webcasting with virtual audio cables <laughs> since 2005. And right. that delay was like, you would get crackle with anything less than 500 milliseconds. Ouch. And so I'm so used to hearing voices in my head that this is nothing. <laughs> uh, so I, I thought there was a way to avoid that. Apparently not, though. Okay. Two computers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to, to plug events that are coming up, Stephen Allison's event has been rescheduled for Friday. Uh, we're planning to do a makeup one tomorrow. I have yet to send out the announcement, but uh, George and Allison have been emailing back and forth uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. noon. Uh, sorry, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, noon Atlantic. Uh, and then we do have a scheduled conversation Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, Atlantic, 12 noon Eastern. Hmm. That's assuming now, uh, George has spoken, like I said, like we were going to try something else, but then George sort of said, well, we're going to try Fuse again. We've got some problems worked out. So we're going to try Fuse again on Thursday. I'm going to be better prepared this time for disaster and have a backup plan in place so that we can migrate to something else if everything crashes, uh, like, say, hang out with extras. Uh, I'm glad I didn't try that yesterday because I would have gone on to uh, Windows 7 Hangout with Extras and had no audio. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, it works fine on the MacBook once I solve my mic problem. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have a backup plan for tomorrow. And because that's the thing with all what... of these presentations, really, you don't have that many people speaking. You know, usually you have a presenter, yeah. a moderator, and you don't need that many people on the mic. And if you can do the streaming and provide some kind of text chat that's lighter and less problematic, solve some problems, and it's cheap. Yeah, uh, we could do that. It's just I like the potential of having many people speaking, and you know I'm sort of trying to gently push things in the direction of these presentations are more like conversations than presentations. You know, this business of somebody coming up and doing an hour with slides, uh, you know, as Dave said to me yesterday, we could record that. We just record that and play it. And we don't need this whole live setup for that. But the conversation, the sort of thing you do in, in these cool casts and the stuff that you and Dave have done on EdTech Talk and in other venues, you know, it, it's a lot friendlier. I've been doing... But like I've been messing around with Ed Radio, my radio station that nobody listens to. And the, the difference between a conversation and a presentation for listenability, for something you want to be listening to, even if you're not following it closely, it's just, it's night and day. Uh, it's incredibly different. It's so rare that you have a long presentation from one person that is interesting. Um, you know, in an audio sense, just it's impossible. Uh, even the TED Talks, which are 20 minutes, unless they have a really good speaker and they select good speakers, it drags, it, it begins to drag. I can and we don't always get good speakers. <laughs> well, I'm all about the conversation. Lisa, I think I interrupted you. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say I was one of the people who had trouble with the fuse meeting thing, and mm -hmm. one of the tr one of the tricks seemed to be that after it takes an eternity to download your stuff, you have to go out of the room and come back in again. A lot of people were stuck that way, and I noticed a lot of people said that in the chat as well. So it's a mm -hmm. stupid workaround, but if people are stuck, it seems to reset it. I don't know what it's downloading that's so weird and different, but um, 
it, it's the the hang up seems to be right after it downloads that it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. Yeah, I it's, did that through Skype as well. Yeah. And it finally worked okay. Could I do a voice check really fast? Can you hear me? Just yeah, fine. Video. You're okay, very my, still. My video, my video is there or it's uh, oh, okay. What happens if you okay. mute your no, just webcam and turn it back listening on? Listening intently. <laughs> Maybe I'll exit and come back. I'll just pop out and come back okay. again. That's pretty funny. I didn't even notice he wasn't moving. <laughs> so, Stephen, I'd love to get your feedback. Uh, on last week's Coolcast, Osvaldo uh, from Argentina was saying he was really having trouble getting into change because he felt like there wasn't a, a central flow of information or a hub as there was with the Google group last time. Did you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I listened to that. Uh, so... I, I know exactly what he was saying, and I, I listened to his entire comment on that, um, and I feel very proud of that. And all my side people have vanished. Okay, well that's kind of interesting. We're still are here. you guys? You're, are you guys all hearing me? Yes. And yeah, Carol, I just want to mention that your typing yeah, is. Yeah, you fine. Yeah. You, you must have very strong Sorry, fingers. Sorry, I did that again. I've no problem. If you want to type, you can always mute off. your mic. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the list the all the little thumbnail images on the right hand side have uh, vanished for some reason. I don't know why. Oh. Well, I, I Maybe see you everyone. made a big screen. Yeah. Maybe this hangout with screen. extras thing. Sometimes, if you click the little settings icon, you'll get the little settings pop up, and then if you close it, it'll kind of reset. I clicked nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting here watching. My hands were folded in my lap. Well, let's play the and video then, back. Let's confirm that. Instant vanished. replay. Yeah, you can play the video back. Anyhow, but do you guys hear me okay? So yes. who cares that my video mm -hmm. is kind of weird? Yeah, um, we're good. I care, but it's anyhow. Um, my, my immediate response to myself was this. Uh, we have now a little more than 1,800 people in the course. You cannot have a central anything with 1,800 people. If you try, I'm getting really bad background noise from someone. Uh, if you try to have a central node, basically what you have now is 1800 people or you know some significant subset of that all competing for attention in this one central node and that gets really ugly really fast uh, and, and it becomes unmanageable and what ends up happening is you get one small group of satisfied users who think oh a real community has formed around this course and this community is I don't know 15 people or so and you get several hundred or several thousand people thinking oh well we were left out of this course we never could become part of the core group every time we said something it was simply ignored by the core community so it's a matter in my case anyways and, and George may have a different answer here Dave may have a different answer but in my case it's a matter of deliberate policy not to have a central group and people can form their own communities, are encouraged to form their own communities. And we even have a page where we will list these communities, um, but we're not gonna form a single course-wide version of it. Uh, it's, it's just, it's inappropriate for a large course. And that's my response to that. Do you have any thoughts on how to facilitate ongoing discussions in a certain with a certain continuity so if the topic is creating a wikipedia article or mobile learning you know what typically winds up happening is you get people blogging all over and if you wanted to just kind of follow that thread of a conversation it's hard to find google groups sort of provided that any other options that you can think of <laughs> and hello kate <laughs> That's pretty funny. Hi, <laughs> <I bet. laughs> 
<laughs> that was pretty good. I, I like that. I didn't want to interrupt. How's my hair look? Google makes you say, it gives you a sign that says check your hair before you sign on. It looks Lovely. great. See that? <laughs> Do you think both people are offended by that, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe bald. Stevens here. That would piss me off. <laughs> maybe bald people. Anyway, yeah, exactly. sorry to drop in late, but do continue. I thought I'd lurk around. It's Halloween. Yeah, cool. I think oh, yeah. the question of following a thread is an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> that looks like a super uh, tool for a small job. <laughs> yeah, you, could, you can make it really big if you want, you know? I mean, like looks very really 70s. Small. Isn't that like a pick they used to use in the, the 70s? The, the peanut gallery is anyway. giving you time to think of an answer, Stephen. Oh, yeah, no. I'm, I, I, the main answer is uh, one of the things I've set up in Grasshopper is a thing called a viewer. And, of course, if one of these things nobody uses. Uh, but if you click on the viewer, basically it presents each of the blog posts that have been aggregated one after the other after the other. And uh, so people can easily just follow the conversation that way. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a slider for all the, all the content. One of the things I want to do with the viewer, and it'd be very easy to do, is to allow the viewer to filter content, uh, you know, from source or by topic or whatever, and so I could easily create uh, a, a little mechanism that allows people to use, say, a hashtag. If they use the hashtag in the post and you filter the content according to that hashtag, you'd get that stream of conversation in the viewer. Now the problem is it's viewer dependent, although of course it's a hashtag, so anybody can filter for any hashtag that they want. So that's one way of, of providing a, a constant thread of conversation, and then it's up to people to pick up and manage their own hashtags. But Jim, here's what there isn't, and this is what he wants and what there isn't. There isn't a way really for people easily to broadcast their message to everyone in the course. There's no shout function. And the reason for that is with 1800 and some odd people, the loudest shouter will get all the attention. Now, I've seen that over and over and over again in discussion lists. Uh, like mailing lists, in discussion forums, like Moodle forums, and you know the people who shout the most often, the most frequently, and the most annoyingly are the ones who get all the attention. And it breaks these things. You, you can kind of get away with it for a short duration course of a few weeks uh, because the shouter hasn't battered everyone else into submission yet. Over a longer course, uh, it, it just doesn't work. Yeah, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, the DOS mailing list, Distance Education Online Symposium, run by University of Pennsylvania, um, used to be really good, but basically degenerated into arguments between Je Brad Jensen and Steve Esco, and that's all the list was. That plus advertisements for conferences. And you go, there's, that's all that, well, in DOS now, there's almost no traffic on it because it became right. useless. You see, you see that over and over and over again. Uh, the only other way to respond to this is to use the heavy hand of moderation. And I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So we set it up structurally, structurally so that there's no way for one person to dominate the discussion. Not even me. I can't dominate the discussion in this course. Uh, if people listen to me, it's because I've earned that and they're paying attention. But I can't force my point of view on them, even with the newsletter. Is there any filtering going on with a newsletter? Do you select anything or it's anything that's listed on the selected blogs and tagged accordingly? Uh, short answer is no. Uh, the long answer is 
the, aggre the, the aggregator aggregates everything and then the, uh, the newsletter displays whatever posts have been tagged change 11. Uh, beyond that, filtering for that tag, that's it. Um, we don't filter the content in any way. Can I ask a question? As we were we were talking about this in a previous Coolcast, and as I understand the the Grasshopper, it it picks up people who have registered with Grasshopper. Is that correct? Um, by picks up, you mean harvests their feed? Yes, it, you have to register with Grasshopper in order for it to harvest your feed. That's that correct. correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, it used to use Technorati in a really effective way. Technorati used to go out into the blogosphere and pick up posts that were tagged. Any, you know, anything. The one we used was writing matrix, and, and we used it with students in different countries who didn't have to know that they were involved with each other or interested in the same thing. Basically, they were tagging their posts writing matrix, and it was uh -huh. a tag that no one else in the world was using because we, you know, we checked it before we, we used it. So we got students in different countries to find each other because Technorati was able to find any blog posts that were tagged, you know, it, irrespective, you know, nobody had to register with anything. It just found the blog posts that were tagged writing matrix. It doesn't yeah. do that anymore. No. Uh, that's what I really like. If I, could in, if I could envisage and invent my own tool, that would be what I'd want. And that would partially solve that problem because uh, then anybody using the tag would be aggregated equally. You know? so, except there were some small details like uh, uh, they had to, uh, Technorati had to know they were there, but Technorati had ways of, there were ways you had to game the system and make sure that the blogs were picked up and you had to look mm -hmm. for blogs with no authority because you're looking for student blogs and things like that. Mm -hmm. but, but it used to work. It used to work just fine. Uh, it used to work. Uh, lots of problems with the Technorati approach, though. Uh, practical problems. Um, the first big practical problem is it's a crawler, uh, which means very quickly it drowns in a huge pile of data. Uh, really, really quickly. Uh, because it's checking everything, and there are you know tens of millions of feeds and each feed produces a certain amount of content and you know for any sort of indexing system to work they have to keep that content and you know eventually you collapse into the weight of data second problem is uh, it becomes really open to spamming because you're picking up everything and people learned it took them a little while to learn but they learned that if they open a blog and you use a tag, they can get their stuff in Technorati. That's what the whole authority thing was intended to respond to, right? Was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a blog with zero authority was probably a spammer. The problem is a blog with zero authority is also probably your student. There exactly, was no, yeah. no functional distinction between spammers and students. And in but at fact, least you could set that. You could, you could, uh, yeah. you know, you, you could get it, your students if you wanted. Yeah, but it, you know, you really depended on nobody else knowing or nobody else using your tag. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that that was crucial, which meant that and if anything ever became popular, I mean, by popular, I mean you know more than a few hundred posts, uh, the spammers would come in. Spammers were awful mm. on, on Technorati. They were awful on Twitter. Mm. Uh, you know, any popular tag on Twitter is, is like slammed with spam. Uh, and, and Twitter has a lot of people working behind the scenes. You, you can see the spammers being punted as they start. And so you, you can tell that there are people at Twitter actively watching and banning spam accounts. That's that's a lot of overhead. We're having yeah, similar similar problems with it with uh, the the one I'm running, which is only 95 people. Just the idea that the people who are coming late into the session, we don't want to aggregate their blogs directly and have all their posts show up because um, it's there's already so much in there, and so we asked everybody to tag. So they're tagging, and we're using uh, Google blog search to try to pull them in, and then I'm pulling it into a widget in WordPress 
but it's picking up everything, of course, that the regular course members are doing, mm -hmm. and it's listing. It's going through so fast that it's not catching the ones that I wanted to catch. And what I'd like to do is be able to pull those in separately, like in its own way in WordPress. But the way I'm aggregating the blogs, I can't do that because I'm aggregating them through the blog role into feed WordPress. And mm -hmm. that means that the blog role is essentially taken by the aggregation function. So these people who are coming in late, who I don't want their blogs aggregated, but I do want access at least to links of what they're doing that's tagged with the pot cert tag, I haven't figured out a way to do it other than Google blog search with RSS, and that's just totally inadequate. I'm not happy with it at all. Yeah, you're, you're probably not going to be able to do it in WordPress. In Grasshopper, I would just assign a special status to the new blogs because every every feed has a status in Grasshopper, and you just you know the that's why like the on hold ones are are orange, the approved ones are green. You don't see this really out. Uh, out in public, but the, on the administrator screen, you see this, and I would just assign a new status, like blue for newbies or something like that. <laughs> yeah. The, the other option I was thinking I could use, I've been reading a course on, by, um, I mean, I'm sorry, I've been reading an article by Diego Leal on how mm -hmm. he set up his class in Colombia, and right. he, he used a Google form instead of, I was using a widget to add your blog to the blog role. But right. he's using a Google form and then feeding it through Yahoo Pipes. And I thought, well, maybe I could have the new blog people put their blog in a Google form, get an RSS feed out of that, and put that in a widget. In That's WordPress. pretty clever, yeah. That, that, that might be close. <laughs> I think I'm going to try that one. But we've got this real problem with um, people adding late or people who don't really want to do the certificate. They don't want to do the whole thing. But I don't want their voices left out because those are often the most valuable posts Mm -hmm. uh, for everybody to read. Speaking so of new voices, work around, work around. Sorry, I just wanted to say hello to Jenny, who's joined us in the Hangout. Are you there? I think she left. She was here and left. I, she, I still see her. She's, her webcam is muted, but if you can chime in, Jenny, feel free. You know, speaking of the Google Form, that I, I'm using a Google Form also for distributed conversations in the course I'm running. And that's been a place where the idea was is that it's just a, a spreadsheet on a WordPress page. Anybody has access to it. Anybody can edit it. And the idea was to, if you wanted to take your small group somewhere and talk about a particular topic, you would just say, we're doing this at this time. We're going to meet in Google. Hang out. We're going to meet in a Facebook group, whatever, and they were able to to put up their sort of distributed conversation on a particular topic, post it there in one place, and people could just check that page whenever they wanted to see what else they could do. We're trying to get people into doing that. So far, the mentors are doing it, mm -hmm. um, but not so much the individuals in the class. But again, with only 95 people, I didn't expect that much activity. But it's provided a central place to sort of. Um, broadcast a, a smaller session or a meeting or something you want to do that's different. And so far it's working pretty well, just not quite enough participation. Mm 